Hi there. This short video covers briefly the difference between getting planning permission and permitted development. My name is Tina Patel and I'm an architect and co-founder at Formed Architects. It is important to not get caught out by the difference and being careful with what is possible is likely to prevent you from getting into bother with the local planning authority. Permitted development covers many different types of extensions from single storey rear extensions through to two storey rear extensions and loft conversions. There are lots of rules for each type of extension. For example, loft extensions under permitted development are not allowed in conservation areas, but single storey rear extensions may be. All the rules are covered under legislation known as the General Permitted Development Order, often referred to as GPDO or PD rights. This legislation is set nationally and applies throughout the country. If you do not meet requirements under PD or proposing something that involves side and rear extensions, then you may be able to undertake what you're looking to do under full planning permission. Full planning permission rules are specific to each local authority and vary throughout the country. So it's important to understand the parameters of what is allowed in your local area. Common projects we would undertake under permitted development include three metre deep single storey extensions and in some instances two storey rear extensions, loft extensions and garden outbuildings. To ensure that you meet compliance with the rules, we would always advise that you apply for a certificate of lawful development. This allows the council to assess your proposed work against the rules and provides peace of mind on compliance. Applications for a Certificate of Lawfulness and full planning are normally made via the planning portal. You can use an architect or even a planning consultant to support you with this. Either will advise you if what you are proposing will require planning permission or can be undertaken under your PD rights. Although working with an architect will also allow you to explore what is viable in terms of the design and consider what can be achieved in the space. Don't forget, getting planning permission for the space, whichever route you adopt, is only one aspect of a project and you will need to get building regulations approval once this is in place and consider other statutory approvals. Worth being aware that if you live in a conservation area or in a listed building, although you may still be able to undertake some work under permitted development, there can be greater restrictions in place and you will want to be in a position to get advice by contacting your local planning office at the council since listed building consent may also be required. Undertaking planner permission under permitted development does not mean you can't be creative though, and formed architects work with people looking to make the most out of the space they have to maximise footprint. This works particularly well under PD rights for lofts, where you can add up to 50 cubic metres to detached and semi-detached houses and 40 cubic metres to terraces. Once we understand where you are looking to add the space, we will advise you what the best type of approval to instate, and this can involve a hybrid approach so that you get the best space possible. Timescales to get planning approvals in place vary, but you should expect things to take about six months before works can start on site. This will include detailed design and getting a good builder in place to start the works. The key to successfully getting permissions in place is understanding what is possible and where the permitted development and planning permission could come into their own and open up possibilities that you may not consider. If you have any stories about getting planning permission or even having it refused, please do get in touch in the comments below. We may well be able to help. For more helpful information through the course of your building project, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next video on the role of an architect in your building project.